Hey everybody, welcome to Bag Lady Unloaded. This is going to be my first episode. And um, just to tell you a little bit about the channel, I plan to talk about experiences that I have when I travel. So today we're going to talk about my first time going to LIB, which is a music festival. Um, it's short for Lightning and a Bottle. And um, I think I first heard about Lightning in a Bottle um, on Instagram. I'm not sure which um, person posted about it, um, but um, I was instantly intrigued and I wanted to go because there was like music um, and I'm a music junkie, obviously a music festival. I was so stupid, right? But there was going to be um, yoga and meditation and it said drug free, but I kind of figured that it wouldn't be. <laughs> um, and I don't know, I was just excited. I wanted to go, you know, I love the opportunity to dress up. I love, love, love Halloween, as you can probably guess. I wanted to go to this music festival. I spent a few years asking people and friends and everything to try to go with me and nobody wanted to go and I was so sad. So one year I realized that Janae Aiko um, was gonna be performing at Lightning in a Bottle and I'm like, oh my God, I really wanna see her in concert again because I'd already seen it before and I just knew it would just be an amazing experience. Um, and from what I had heard, LIB wasn't that you know, big of a music festival. So I was thinking that maybe I might be able to be like a little closer to stage. Um, and so I couldn't find anybody to go again this year, but I decided I was gonna go by myself. I was terrified. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God. Um, at the time I was living in Georgia and Lightning in a Bottle was somewhere central California. I can't really remember the name of the city. Um, if I figure it out, I'll put it in the description box below. But um, anyway, I was going to have to fly across the country and sleep in a tent, which I had never done by myself like I had been camping before but in cabins like not actually sleeping in a tent with a sleeping bag around strangers I'm thinking like oh my god what's gonna happen somebody can like unzip my tent and come in there I don't know why women always think someone want to get us right <laughs> so I'm like somebody's gonna get me um and you know long story short I went ahead and did it anyway um I booked all my tickets I requested my time off work and I started my journey to Lightning in the Bottle. Now, it took me 24 hours to get there. Oh, my God. Um, I, because I'm, like, really cheap when it comes to flights and everything. So, I was like, oh, it'll be cheaper for me to fly into um, Los Angeles if I can um, go from Orlando. So, I took a, a bus to Orlando, which is way long from um, Atlanta, Georgia. And... It really wasn't worth it so don't don't ever do that but I took a bus from Atlanta to Orlando and then I took a flight from Orlando to LAX um, and then also the time in between it literally took me over 24 hours I was tired I was hot and I was as you can guess stinky um, and when I finally got to LAX, it, there was a bus that they call the lightning bus that took us from the, um, from the LAX airport <laughs> all the way to the campsite. And so I get there, I meet someone who's really cool. She's like, oh, you're so adventurous. You should come out, you know, and hang with me and my friends because she was meeting people there. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'll find a little family there and maybe I'll have some fun. So um, we get there. I meet her friends. We set up the tent and everything like that. And then I go to sleep naturally <laughs> because I was so tired from the trip over. And I could just go in my tent and pass out. I wake up and it's dark outside. Now, I've never been to a music festival before and I did not have any tips on how not to get lost. But I was so excited. I just got up and wandered off 
to um to like the campgrounds or past the campgrounds to where everybody was you know setting up like the stages and everything like that the art was being set up um because it was the first uh day i got like an extended pass to go and so like i said again everything was being set up and i kind of just walked around for a little bit you know and just was trying to get the vibe of the place you know there were people dressed in all sorts of weird costumes and just ready to party there was a little bit of music playing and like food um vendors and it was really cool i was like, so excited for the next day but i you know started want walking back to my tent but then <laughs> i couldn't find it i couldn't find it at all i walked around for like two hours um and i couldn't find out where my tent was and i didn't know to bring like flags and everything people had like markers so they could be able to find their home easily but i had never been and i wasn't going with anyone who knew so i just was clueless as hell and so um anyway i after like two hours i find someone who's like or someone finds me rather and they're like are you lost I'm like, yes, I don't know where my tent is. And they're like, well, where did you come from? What street was it on? And I was like, oh, I think it was on, you know, this or that. I, it really just was, it was so ridiculous. I wanted to almost to pretend like I was drunk because there was no reason. <laughs> I didn't know to even look at. They had like little street signs um, near everybody's tent so you could kind of figure out where you were. And if you just knew the street sign, there was maps so you could... Um, or the name of the street that you were on, you could look at the map and then find your way back home. But I didn't do that. And so they wandered around with me for a little while and then they gave me a flashlight and was like, yo, I'm done. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> Good luck finding your home. And so then um, I sat down at the end of this hill. At this point, I'm like really crying and like, I don't even know what to do. I came up such an idiot. Um, and somebody else finds me and they're like, oh, I'll help you find your tent. <laughs> it's so cold. It's really dark. It's really late at this point. And um, that's the thing about like Central California. It's, it'll be like really hot during the day, but then during the night, it drops to like below 30 degrees, right? And so super cold, I have on, I don't even remember what I had on, but it just wasn't like, I didn't have a coat on. So he gives me his coat and like follows me around trying to help me find, he's like, who are you with? And I was like, well, I came by myself, but I just met some friends and they helped me set up my tent. And, you know, so we're screaming their names and um, just really loud, just, you know, Kevin, Miranda, <laughs> we were just screaming the names of these people. And we don't hear anything. And we like wandered around like almost, you know, all of the campsite. Um, and people were still coming in. And so it made it even harder for me to find where I was in the world. Um, so then he leaves me. He's like, you can keep the coat until the morning. I hope you find your people, but I'm going to bed. <laughs> So now I have somebody's flashlight. Now I have somebody's coat. And I wander back over to like um, the main area. And there's like swings and stuff over there. So I'm like sitting on a swing. And some um, girl comes up to me and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I can't find my tent. <laughs> and I, at this point, I was so embarrassed. I really wanted to pretend like I was drunk. But I guess it didn't matter because she was drunk. And um, she's like, oh, my God, this poor baby. <laughs> she thought I was so young. And I'm like, I'm actually not all that young. I'm just, you know, an idiot. <laughs> and so um, she's like, come with me, come with me. And so I am I end up with her and her friends. And we're, like, walking around. They're trying to help me find my tent. But they were so drunk and out of it that we couldn't even look that long. And so somebody next door to their campsite, after I wandered over to their campsite, um, was 
they heard us talking and they were like, oh, you're, you've never been to a, you know, a music festival before. Why did you come by yourself? And you should have did more research, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm so embarrassed. I'm just like taking all of these hits. Like you're completely right. Um, this was just not smart. And, um, so anyway, the guy that hears us talking, he's like, I'll help you find your campsite. Like, yeah, like, I want you to have a good time. It's your first time here. You know, like, uh, let's let's go. Let's go. And I'm like, I really don't think I like I really don't want you to waste your time because I have no idea where I was. And um, he's like, come on, I'm going to help you anyway. So we leave these girls and then he wanders around with me for another few hours. <laughs> And it's really, really late. And he's like tired. He's like, yo, you know what? You can sleep at my campsite. You can find it in the morning. So we go back to his tent. He cleans out his tent for me, gives me his sleeping bag. And then he's sleeping in like this little main area, the sitting area that him and his friends have um, created for them. Like it's like bean bags and everything. And I felt so bad. And I was like, no, you don't have to do this because I'm an idiot. He's like, no, it's fine. It's totally chill. And so he, um, he lets me sleep in his sleeping bag in his tent while he sleeps like on a bean bag in their sitting area outside with a coat around him. And I felt so bad. I woke up first thing in the morning. I only slept for like a few hours at that point because it had to be like three in the morning. Um when I finally was like going to bed in his tent. And so a few hours after that, I woke up and I, uh, for some reason, just remembered the name of the street, <laughs> the name of the street, they said, and I went to find a map and, and figured out where the tent was. It was like the craziest thing ever. Like the name of the street um, just literally popped into my head and <laughs> it was like God or something. And so I walk and just stare at this map and find my way over and it took me like 10 seconds to like find out where I was on the map and where my tent was it was insane but I think I learned something um that night that a lot of the times we're so afraid to to do something or to I don't know, to go after something or whatever. We're just afraid to just do something that we've never done before. And I had a lot of fears, like on the plane ride over, on the two bus rides <laughs> over, um, that someone was going to try and get me, that I wanted to try and be safe, and I didn't really know what to expect. But what I found out was that Lightning in a Bottle was a really tight-knit community, and... I found so many people just ready and willing to just drop everything they were doing and help me. And so there was really no reason for me to be scared. And just imagine um, if I had listened to all of the people who were telling me not to go, that I would have never had the experience. Because yes, I did like completely lose my tent the first night, but the next three to four days I was there, um, I did get to see Janae Aiko in concert. I did, um, I just had so much fun. The people that I was camping with, they turned out to be awesome. We talked and laughed the whole time. We um, meditated on the hill with lots of other people. There were sound baths, like I said, and yoga. And I just had such an amazing time. I wrote in my journal the whole time, but I would have never gotten to experience any of that or get over my fear of you know being at a music festival by myself if I listen to all the people telling me not to go um so a lot of the times when we want to do something we think about all the things that can go wrong and we kind of forget what about all the fun you could have what about the things that could go right so that was my experience at Lightning in the Bottle and I've been back since then and again had another amazing time um something crazy did happen that time as well but I'm going to save that for another episode of Bag Lady Unloaded thanks for watching